energy. This is energy that is power generated from sources that are constantly being replenished. These renewable energy resources won't run out, unlike fossil fuels and gas, and it, that includes clean energy such as electric, solar, hydro, and wind. So what is the importance of clean energy? Well, that most obviously is our world runs on the energy we produce. Clean energy production allows us to generate the energy we need without the greenhouse gas emissions and negative environmental effects that come with fossil fuels, in turn helping to reduce climate change. So I wonder, what initiatives have Belize started doing? Oh, well let's find out. Good day. Um, so I have a few questions for you about the transitioning to clean energy since we are uh, celebrating the World Consumer Rights Day. And the first one I have for you is, why invest in electric charging stations? There's a global movement happening um, in terms of uh, setting the backdrop for transitioning to cleaner and more sustainable energy options. And of course, that's the efforts to mitigate against the impact of climate change. Um, within that global context, um, as stewards of the environment, our company sees ourselves at the forefront of those efforts. That said, we are also providing uh, that opportunity to the public to understand that if they would like to transition to electric charging um, or electric vehicles, that the infrastructure, the support, the solutions are there to transition. Okay, great. And what is the vision of the project to transition to electric cars? Okay, so uh, we plan to set up charging stations across the country as part of our pilot project. So our vision is to provide that peace of mind to electric vehicle owners or to people interested in electric vehicles so that they know that they can travel the country and still be able to fuel up, as it were, um, the fuel now being electricity in this case. In addition to that, we want to empower people with the understanding that, again, if they choose to transition, that the necessary infrastructure is there to facilitate that. We view ourselves as really the backbone of that transition. Without these charging solutions, the transition will be slower paced, the transition will be more challenging for Belizeans, for consumers, for those interested in doing so. So we, we see ourselves as a solution provider in that way. That's great. And so I have to ask, how does this initiative benefit the people and the economy of Belize? So there are many benefits that come with electrifying brown transportation. From the public standpoint, when we're looking at introducing electric buses, for example, we're talking about cleaner, more modern, and more comfortable transportation options for the public. And that, of course, extends to improved quality of life. From an individual point of view, again, it's that power that comes with choice, understanding that these options are available. And if I would like to opt into that option, then I have the supporting infrastructure there to facilitate my transition. And then again, coming towards the economic point of view, with the rising cost of fuels and the uncertainties with the oil industry, by transitioning to electric ground transportation, we can mitigate those uncertainties. We're able to focus less our foreign exchange on oil and external oil, and really put those efforts back into building Belize. Have there been any challenges, setbacks in the implementation of this transition? So as you can imagine, there are many uh, factors to overcome when we're talking about introducing new technologies to people. Uh, one of those, or two of those, would definitely be education and capacity building. So building that awareness among the public and the users and those who will be impacted by this technology so that they understand how it works, the implications of introducing new technologies like this, and the benefits overall that we can all experience from using electric vehicle and electric vehicle um, technologies. That said, as a company, we have focused on building that capacity within our um, internal employees group. So especially with our transport department, we have been conducting introductory courses and sessions 
and we've been exposing them to the realities of working with and driving electric vehicles so they can really get the knowledge and the capacity that comes with experience itself. In addition to that, we plan to do more extensive courses and programs with this starting this year and over the next few years. And we're not just talking about our mechanics, going more broadly and going outside the company, we're talking about capacity building for first responders, we're talking about capacity building for police, um, for medical technicians, for electricians, for the wider public so they can become part of the ecosystem that really exists around introducing new electric vehicle technologies to Belize. So here at our corporate headquarters, we have a level three rapid charger. It's a fast charger and it's the fastest available on the market currently, so that's globally. What that means is that this can charge an electric vehicle anywhere from as little as 15 minutes up to about an hour for a full 100% charge. So this will be one of three that will be deployed in the first phase of our pilot project for establishing an electric vehicle charging network. And then we plan to roll out even more level three chargers because we understand what people are going for is that gas station experience where it's just plug in, run to the restroom, run to the convenience store, and then come back and you're ready to go with a full charge. So we're really trying to build out a network where that rapid charge is available across the country. Okay. Would you have these uh, charging stations within other companies? Like let's say that employees get their electric cars and they would have that convenience at their own work? So currently that's not within the scope of our pilot. However, we do understand that businesses and entities or um, bit, uh, just convenience stores, commercial centers, banking centers might see it as an opportunity or a new service to offer to their customers and we remain open to collaborating with anybody, any business who sees that as the future of advancing their business. Oh, that's good. Okay. And um, so is it just level 3 chargers or there's different... Okay, so as part of the pilot again, we're rolling out 12 overall. Three of those, as I've already said, are level 3 chargers. The other nine are level 2. So a level 2 charger is a little slower than a rapid charge, okay. obviously. Um, and that will charge a vehicle in anywhere as little as 6 to 8 hours, up to 12 hours. Again, depending on the specifications of the vehicle, the health of the battery, the type of vehicle that you have. There are various factors that will determine how long it takes. But as I said, 9 of those chargers that we'll be deploying will be level 2 in this first phase. So here we have the level 3. And this should be charged within how long is it? <laughs> well, right now, what our dashboard is saying within, within about a half hour to 45 minutes, but that's because we had a bit of charge on this vehicle. Okay. But um, it will be as little as 15 minutes, again, depending on the specifications and the realities that you're working with. Right. And this is the first level three that's been installed in the country. And we plan to roll out two more. Right now, we're working on the installation in San Ignacio Town. Okay. So if you're familiar with the Macau River Park area near Hodes restaurant, we're currently in the process of repairing that location for an installation. You can look out for that in as little as less than one month. And then there will be a third location further down south. Okay. Um, so currently you have one level three here, and where else? There is a second one being installed right now in San Ignacio, uh, and then there will be a third um, down south, somewhere within the Dangriga area, independence area. All right. So I guess since we have some charge already, we could test drive this to go on the road. Sure, we can do a quick demonstration, <laughs> okay. see how it performs. On recently completed a lease cost, lease thrift, generation and transmission expansion plan study that created a roadmap for generation addition and transmission strengthening over the 20-year horizon. In 2022, 
our generation profile consisted of 49% renewables, 35% of which can be attributed to hydros, 13% to biomass, and the balance to solar. The plan aims to balance costs, reliability, and sustainability. As such, in the next five years, the recommendation is to install 60 megawatts of solar power. Solar power is pollution free and it causes no greenhouse gas emission. It also reduces the dependency on foreign oil and fossil fuel, which we know is variable due to the nature of the market. Solar power is also low maintenance and can be readily available. With this new addition, it would help to diversify our generation mix as we move towards stabilizing the cost of power. BEL is committed to achieving the country's target of 75% renewable by 2030. So what prompted Caribbean Motors to be interested in the green energy movement? It was about four years ago, our CEO was uh, at the auto show in Shanghai, China and came back and reported to the board that almost 50% of the whole Shanghai auto show was about electric vehicles. And uh, think what you like about China, they tend to set the tone for what's happening in the world. and. As a company, we like to be on the forefront of what's going on in the world in terms of trends. So we we predicted that trend coming in, in terms of electric vehicles. So it was kind of the foresight of our CEO seeing what was happening in China at the time and wanting to be on the leading edge of that, uh, that energy transition, not just electric vehicles, but solar energy and and just the whole energy movement. So since then, uh, many people may not know, but we brought in the first electric vehicles to Belize about two and a half years ago. Uh, and those first two electric vehicles are still going strong today. Um, so it's amazing uh, what's, what's actually been tested and being tested in Belize for quite some time, um, just to show that the concept works. Now it's very interesting uh, what got us excited about this whole concept is not just electric vehicles as vehicles, but as energy management solutions. So in China, the, the general model is most employers would have uh, solar awnings at workplaces. And if you own an electric vehicle as an employee, you would drive your vehicle to work in the morning and plug into the chargers that are powered by solar. And oftentimes employers will either fully subsidize or partially subsidize those charging rates from the public charging rates. Uh, so you charge all day while you're at work and then when you drive your vehicle home at night, you can plug your car into your home and most people think they're, they're doing that to continue charging their car, but what they're doing is actually powering their home off of their car battery all night long driving back to work the next day and charging up their car again. So again, they're using their car storage power to power their house using solar electricity that they uh, captured during the day while they were at work. So just an amazing system of being able to use your car as an energy management solution, not just a mode of transportation. So since those first two vehicles have that we imported into Belize, we have imported a number of other vehicles from small SUVs, small basic SUVs to large luxury SUVs to cargo vans uh, from the BYD brand and the Volkswagen brand. And um, we, we've been using those as demo models to show customers what is possible with electric vehicles. Uh, people need to see it for themselves. There is some skepticism about electric vehicles, so we wanted to show that this is legitimate. These, the, the quality of these vehicles is, is very, very good. And that the ranges are absolutely perfect for Belize. Being a small country, um, within the average range of an electric vehicle, you can go just about anywhere somebody goes on a normal day. The range of vehicles right now, the battery range ranges from 300 kilometers. The shipment of vehicles uh, that we have coming in next week actually 
have a range of 600 kilometers. Uh, so in 600 kilometers, you, you've got a lot of options where you can go in Belize on any given day without charging your vehicle. So um, Belize is a perfect country to adopt electric vehicles just based on the sheer size of our country. Uh, it sets up very, very well for this energy and transportation transition. As a company, we're not here just to go green because green is in fashion. We're very conscious of green needs to be economically sound as well. And the great thing is these green energy solutions from solar to electric vehicles uh, is very financially sound as well. So in our real life testing, the electric vehicles save between 66 and 70 percent of fuel costs using electricity versus gas or diesel so that's based on a 25 mile per gallon diesel vehicle and those are fairly conservative numbers um, so we are very much looking at sound economic methods to cut costs in our own business so aside from just uh, lowering your operating costs from gas or diesel to electricity there's several other benefits to the transition to electric vehicles so number one it's just very silent it's very quiet and very smooth so your driving experience is a very positive one with an electric vehicle if you've driven one you'll know what i mean and if you haven't come and see us and and uh, take a test drive for yourself but it's very very smooth very quiet it's just a, a serene experience driving an electric vehicle um, also your maintenance costs are far less with an electric vehicle so there's no oil to change for instance uh, there's what's called regenerative braking with electric vehicles where the electric motor does a lot of the uh, the stopping power for you so your brakes last exponentially longer than a regular vehicle so there's so many other benefits than just um, savings in fuel so approximately a year and a half ago we started on a project with Belize Electricity Limited in importing 12 charging stations because that's a big issue for a lot of people is where do I charge my vehicle so we're in the process right now of installing 12 charging stations with Belize Electricity Limited with BEL countrywide so with such a with Belize being a small geographic uh, country uh, 12 charging stations will adequately cover the entire country with charge points as well as every vehicle comes with its own charging station or charge cord um, so you won't be left without uh, without an ability to charge uh, so the, the infrastructure to be able to charge your car is is happening right now and I, I believe there's approximately 17 electric vehicles in the country right now we didn't bring them all in other people have imported their own vehicles but they're making out very very well we have another uh, 19 vehicles uh, just about ready to enter the country so we'll double the the amount of electric vehicles on the roads in belize within the next month or so so it's a very exciting time there's probably more about electric vehicles today than there has been in the last several years so again very very exciting times for belize in terms of this transition from uh, gas and diesel to uh, e-mobility there is a project going on right now and I'm sure many people have heard of it uh, in the media uh, specifically through Belize City with electric buses coming so we have put in a bid we don't know if we've won yet but uh, we're working with a with a very high quality partner BYD who has um, worked on several electric bus projects throughout the world um, and we are offering electric buses to to the country of Belize for both Belize City and some cross-country buses uh, so that is very exciting to see public transportation and aside from just transitioning from gas or diesel buses to electric we're talking about a very nice public transportation experience with 
USB ports and Wi-Fi and, and things like that. So aside from this uh, e-mobility transformation, we're not just talking about gas or diesel to electric, but we're talking about just a new standard of public transportation in the country of Belize. And I think that's exciting for, for us as a company and for the general public as well. So you ask, is there skepticism? Of course, there's skepticism with anything new. That's just human nature. If something's new, we're skeptical until we can see it for ourselves. I am not a skeptic because I've seen this for myself. I've driven the vehicles. I've seen the solar power working. I've seen the financial savings, both on the transportation and on the energy side. Um, so it's going to take people to see for themselves, and that's okay. Uh, so we have some early adopters that that want to be a part of it right now and we have some skeptics that are believing that it won't work or they want to see it work and again that's a very normal transition for any new technology so if there's skeptics out there stay tuned keep your eyes open watch ask good questions but don't make assumptions come and ask good questions if you're an early adopter or you're excited about it come on board find the details again we don't want you to jump into something just because it's the trend we want you to jump into something because it it truly works and it truly makes sense so we're certainly here to answer any questions that anybody has um, and we've been doing that for the last couple of years but please continue to ask questions please it's the right thing to do another question we get asked a lot is the skill or the ability of our service team to service the electric vehicles uh, as well as parts um, and, and those are very valid questions so yes we're in the process of upgrading our mechanics training bringing in parts for these new vehicles the great thing is a an electric vehicle requires much fewer parts than a gas or diesel vehicle um, yes there's very complex parts but they're they're far simpler in terms of their use and there's far fewer parts so the service in electric vehicle is yes it's it's complex in terms of it's it's more electric than it is mechanical um, but our technicians are being upgraded to to be able to handle that so that is something that we're relying on our manufacturers to help us with uh, we're upgrading our scanners and things like that uh, so it's certainly a journey but that is coming as we speak as a company, we're very much uh, wanting to show the country of Belize that we are committed to this. And, and what do I mean by that? We've invested in solar power for our own locations. So seven of our locations countrywide are running on solar during the day. Um, again, not just because we want to be green or eco, certainly we want to do that. But it makes financial sense for us. We're a very power intensive business with our air conditioners, our equipment in the shops, that type of thing. And we're now able to, during a sunny day, uh, in the middle of the day, run completely off of solar, with solar power from solar panels. And uh, we're happy to partner with BYD again, a vehicle manufacturer that also um, is in the solar energy business, both from battery storage as well as solar panels. So. It's exciting right now. We're finally finished our solar project and running on solar power at seven locations countrywide. Again, we're a company that wants to show uh, the general public. We don't want to just talk about it. We want to be able to talk about facts. So right now I can check on our seven locations from an app on my phone and see on any given day how much power we're producing at any given time. Uh, so that's, that's a lot of fun. I probably spend too much time watching that app, but uh, it's, it's just proving to me um, that it is financially viable and that it is uh, a great technology to be employing here in Belize. So yes, we want to put our money where our mouth is and show the general public that we're in this as well. We're not just trying to sell it, but that we're using it and we have a use case and it's great with seven locations countrywide. We can see geographically the differences from Punta Gorda to Dangriga to Belmopan and and Spanish Lookout in Belize City and Orange Walk and Corzal, we can see throughout the day how each location is performing and how geographically um, there's differences. I can see if it's a foggy morning in Punta Gorda. I can see if it's a sunny day in Belize City. So it's, it's, uh, it's a very unique opportunity. All I would say is Belize, give it a chance. 
Uh, if you have questions, please come out and ask. We'd, we'd be happy to answer any questions. But uh, Belize is on a, an energy and transportation evolution from gas and diesel to electric vehicles from regular power to solar power. There's lots of exciting things to come. I think technology is moving so fast day by day. Who knows what next year holds, but uh, we're trying to just seize the day as it comes to grasp the technology that's available today and showcase what it can do for us today, uh, believing that tomorrow has an even brighter future. So, uh, so yes, please stay tuned for, for more as uh, we believe technology will advance even greater in the years to come. We also have brought in uh, for our island friends and those in tourism areas, uh, lithium electric powered golf carts. So easy go brand of golf carts with a Samsung lithium battery in it. Uh, long range up to 40 miles per charge. Very uh, um, cost effective to operate. So just looking at all different segments of the transportation industry and how we can electrify and make more green and, uh, and cost effective. For some people, the jump from gas or diesel vehicles to electric is a big jump. And uh, that's why hybrid or plug-in hybrid is a great transition vehicle. Uh, so we are looking at bringing in plug-in hybrids or uh, evaluating that opportunity where you can drive it on a pure battery range. Uh, the ones we're looking at potentially between 80 and 120 kilometers. Uh, so you can get the feel of all electric, but you've got that comfort of having a gasoline engine. So for instance, if you live in Belize and you want to drive up to Cancun, you can put it in hybrid mode and uh, it's no worries as long as you have a gas station. Um, but as long as you've got electricity, then you can also use uh, the battery. So that is, that's a nice transition for people that like the idea of electric, but have that uncomfort with uh, how do these charging stations work and, and are there enough of them and that type of thing. So there, there is uh, an in-between stage that we're investigating as well. Also a big shout out to BEL who has invested in the first charging infrastructure. It's always that awkward time when there's not too many vehicles on the road. So the investment in the charging infrastructure from private sector doesn't seem to make sense. Uh, and if there's no chargers, then nobody wants to invest in vehicles. So it's that awkward initial stage, but a uh, big shout out to BEL for making that initial investment to get the ball rolling to give people comfort that there are charging stations there to, to get them through.